Today we are going to be speaking, uh, Vicki Duell will be speaking on bullying in the workplace. Um, and thank you to Cadoba for providing our lunch today. Um, a little bit on Vicki. Uh, she's re she'd recently retired from teaching at UNK. Uh, in 2008, she retired as principal at Walnut Middle um, School. Vicki began teaching when Walnut was considered the toughest junior high in Grand Island. Uh, Vicki began teaching, um, oh, excuse me, during her tenure, um, she taught kids how to be more responsible for themselves, how to have respect for themselves, and how to have respect for the people that she came into contact, when they, that they came into contact with. Because of her work, because of her work with character education and bullying, Vicki is national member of the board of directors at Hands and Words Are Not For Hurting project. So please help me welcome Vicki Duell. I'll try to make it through this without coughing. I have this summer thing that the doctor says is going around. Um, October is National Bullying Awareness Month. And for many of us, when we talk about uh, bullying awareness, we think of schools. And we think of the old sticks and stones will break our bones, but words will never hurt us kind of thing. And you say, that's a kid thing. Well, um, it's not a kid thing anymore, which shouldn't really surprise us, because bullies grow up. And bullies grow up to be um, men who are abusive to their um, co-workers, their spouses, and their children, and women who are abusive to their co-workers, their spouses, and their children. So um, it's a pattern that if we don't break, it just continues to repeat itself over and over again. Historically, um, I think bullying's probably been around forever. There's not anything that you can say that says, oh, bullying started here. Um, here's the day and the time and the incident that bullying started. It started. Historically, um, in the Scandinavian countries, when they became aware of some bullying and the deaths of some young men because of um, suicide, because of bullying, a man named Dan Olveas said, we need to do something about this. So he is the one that started um, researching and looking at what you needed to do about bullying. Scandinavian countries became aware of it. Australia got on the bandwagon. Canada got on the bandwagon and the United States is saying it's a rite of passage. So in the United States, we didn't really start to say, bullying can be scary and we need to do something about it until we started to see school shootings. And during school shootings, when kids started to say, I couldn't take it anymore, I was bullied, I, I just couldn't handle it, and I didn't think I had any other way out than bringing a gun to school and shooting somebody. So that's when we became really um, conscious about bullying and the effects of bullying. If we look in the workplace, we're at about the same place. Australia has gotten on board with doing things about workplace bullying. Canada has gotten on board about doing things with workplace bullying. The United States is the only s civilized country that does not have any state or federal laws addressing bullying in the workplace. We don't, um, and I'm not sure why. You know, we can define all sorts of harassment laws, gender harassment, sexual harassment, uh, discrimination because of ethnicity, but we're not going to talk about what goes on with bullying. So I'm going to say, you know, I'm not an expert, but I'm going to tell you, I think the way the pendulum swings, the way it went with schoolyard bullying, I'm guessing before long the United States will say, oh my gosh, we need to do something about workplace bullying too. So what I'm going to do is, I'd like to keep this pretty informal. If you have questions, you know, bounce in with them. But we're just going to kind of do Bullying 101, and then we're going to talk about things that we can do to empower ourselves and others if we run into this. You know, um, if we think back to school, the handout kind of has, not kind of, the handout does have a lot of information. Um, if we think back to school, we can all, I'm guessing, remember somebody that we know was a bully or some experience that we had with a bully. Somebody was mean, um, she or he made fun of the way we dressed, she or he made fun of the way our hair looked, she or he made fun of the fact that we had um, glasses or freckles or acne or whatever, um, she or he 
tried to keep us from our friends and from going places or walking down the hall. Then we think, we grew out of that. Thank God, you know. I graduated. I left the bullies behind. I'm 20, 21, 22, and I'm going to work. And I don't have to worry about bullies anymore. Wrong. You know, we run into the workplace with um, a boss or a coworker who has those same kind of personality things that a bully has. If you look at um, the definition of a bullying, we say it has four parts. It's always an imbalance of power. So that's always the bully, for some reason, has more power than the target. <coughs> so you can say um, the bully is more socially aware th of, than the target, the bully is smarter than the target, the bully is more popular than the target, whatever. There's always an imbalance of power. So the bully has more power than the person that they target. Um, we know that there is always an intent to harm. What actions they do, they do because they want to hurt somebody. It may be verbally, it may be physically, it may be relationally, um, it may be cyberly. But whatever I do, I do because I have the power to do it and because I want to hurt you. So that's the, the two big things. And the third is there's always a threat for the target of further aggression. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen again. In most cases, bullying isn't a single incident. It's something that's repeated over and over and over again. Most recently, um, they've added a fourth element, which isn't in the, in the definition of bullying, but the fourth element that they've added is fear. And that whole concept is the idea that once I know somebody has targeted me and they're bullying me, I'm pretty afraid of that person. And they don't have to do much to me other than look at me, and it's intimidating. And so I'm kind of on this, this edginess going, I wonder when the next thing is going to happen, the next threat. And all that person has to do is look at me, snarl at me, and I'm thinking, oh, God, here we go again. They may not touch me. They may not say anything to me. It's just that fear that I know they can because they have in the past. So if we look at um, um, bullying in the school, we know that if we don't stop it, it's going to escalate. If we become um, teachers or um, students, peers, or administrators who say it's not that big of a deal, it doesn't go away on its own. It just keeps repeating itself over and over and over again. So if we look at um, bullying in um, the schools, research tells us that one in three kids say that they have experienced bullying, uh, being bullied. Olveas tells us that in sixth grade, 60% of the kids who, who were identified as bullies in sixth grade had at least one criminal conviction by the time they were 24, 60%. Olveas also tells us that of that 60%, 40% of them have three or more criminal convictions. So it's not good for us to ignore what the bully does. You know, not only does it hurt the target, not only does it hurt the people that watch the bullying going on, but it doesn't, it doesn't help the bully either. So if we look at um, bullying in the school, and then if we look at bullying in the workplace, we can say it's about the same thing. Um, workplace bullying is not a personality clash. Workplace bullying is not, oh, I don't get along with my coworker. That's not it. Workplace bullying is not um, the thing that um, um, somebody is mean once in a while. Workplace bullying is not, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm working at the cash register and somebody walks by and bumps me and says, oh, excuse me. That's an accident. Accidents happen. Workplace bullying is not when that person goes by and bumps me. Again, workplace bullying is when that person goes by over and over and over again, bumps me, may smirk and say, oh, excuse me, you know what? Not that many accidents happen over and over again. So, so I've been targeted um, by that person. Um, workplace place bullying is not a lack of manners or rudeness. It's not, you know, the person that belches all the time or that cracks their knuckles all the time, or that primps in front of the mirror all the time. That's not workplace bullying. Um, 
we say to kids, you know, when we work with them on telling and tattling, we say, um, you know what, if somebody's picking their nose, it's not that important. If somebody's picking your nose, then it's a problem. Well, it's the same kind of thing with workplace bullying. You know, if they're doing stuff, mm, it's not that big of a deal. When it becomes threatening, threatening, when it becomes intimidating, when it becomes constant and it puts you at risk, then it is that big of a deal. Um, I have this little deal, this little activity here, and I want everybody to take one of these and then just pass it around. <coughs> And these are little identifiers of some examples of workplace bullying. We can say when we talk about kids, we can say that we know um, workplace bullying falls into about the realm of four different areas. And one of those areas is um, physically bullying somebody. One of those areas is verbally bullying somebody. One of those areas is relationally bullying somebody. And, and uh, Harold, you can't even come close to what we women can do when it comes to relational bullying. We all have advanced degrees <laughs> in relational bullying. Um, and relational bullying, if you think of even little girls, it's that rolling of the eyes that, that you can't be my friend if you talk to her, that she took my boyfriend so we're going to group together and ignore her. Um, it's the she can't, she's not coming to my birthday party because I decided I don't like her. It's that fickle friendship kind of thing. You're my, we call them kind of frenemies. You're my friend today, but not tomorrow. And so because you're afraid of the control I have, you're going to suck right into that. You know, you're going to be my friend. You're going to, you, because I'm so excited, then I'll turn on you in the blink of an eye. If you're around me, you're not going to stop me because you can turn on me tomorrow. You know, today she's your target, tomorrow it might be me. So relational bullying um, is very manipulative and it's very controlling. Then the, the newest kind of bullying, and if any of us could figure this one out in a way to respond to it, we'd be multi-gazillionaires, and that's cyberbullying because um, very young kids have telephones, um, access to iPads, access to social networking, access to all of that. And no matter how much we talk about courtesy, um, with cyberbullying, in a couple fingertips, what I, could, what I can say one-on-one -on -one to you, in a couple touches of a button, I can say things about you to 100 people. So it's so much more powerful and it's not personal. Um, I have to look at you and bully you. I can cyber bully you by anywhere. It's 24-7. So for the target, no matter when it happens, um, I can't escape it. No more can I go home and get away from it, any of that sort of stuff. So cyber bullying happens in the school. If we talk about workplace, all of those things can happen in the workplace also. So cyberbullying in the workplace can be the old sending email rumors around about somebody. Um, relational bullying in the workplace can be the old, you know, we gang up against them or against <coughs> her. Um, the physical verbal bullying, physical uh, bullying or the verbal bullying. You have those pieces of paper. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pretend that this is our worker, <coughs> our coworker. And we're going to say, we're going to read what's on this. And we're going to take our coworker and we're going to drop her on her head. So um, if I'm working and my boss decides that he or she doesn't like me and singles me out for unwanted or unwarranted punishment, um, then it's, ero it's eroding my self esteem. So that's one form of workplace bullying. Yours is. Establishing impossible deadlines that will set up the individual to fail. So impossible deadlines. I'm the boss and I say, 
I want this report, all of this done by five o'clock today, and it's impossible to do. Mine says withholding necessary information or purposely, purposefully giving the wrong information. So if I'm telling you, here's what I want you to do, I give, here's the report I want you to finish, I don't give you everything you need to report to finish the report, or I um, give you too much information, all of that sort of stuff. Intruding on a person's privacy by pestering, spying, or stalking. <laughs> this is when this is my ears don't work. Um, uh, intruding on a person's privacy. Yeah. So I give you no personal space. I'm right in the middle of it. Every time you turn around, I'm there. Making jokes that are obviously offensive by spoken words or an email. So that's the old um, borderline sexual harassment kinds of stuff. I'm, I'm sending emails or I'm saying things that um, I know probably in my heart. They're not funny, but I'm doing it for a purpose, and you find it offensive. Are there any ones where you go, just kidding? Pardon me? Are there any ones where you go, just kidding? You say something really rude to something, and then you go, oh, just kidding. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you, you say something really rude to somebody, and then you go, just kidding. Yeah, the whole just kidding thing. Um, when we work with kids, we say, if you say just kidding, you shouldn't have said it in the first place. Just kidding does not erase that. Just like doing something on purpose and then saying, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, and I'm sorry is not a, a rewind and forget about it. If I need unreasonable, unreasonable duties or workload, which is unfavorable to one person in a way that it creates unnecessary pressure. So it's the whole expectation of, I need you to stay late tonight. I didn't tell you ahead of time. I need you to stay late tonight. And once, that's okay. Repeatedly over and over, that's not a good thing. Um, um, unreasonable duties, it's the, oh, I know that you got this to do. I know this is your job, but I want you to do this and this and this and this and this on top of it. That reminds me of something <clears throat> you said. reminds me of something that our speaker said a couple Saturdays ago. She said, bullying can be just one time. Yeah. and So if, if you're making that person stay late because you get a kick out of it and you mm -hmm. want to make them suffer, that's still bullying, whether you... Yeah, and, and that, is, um, that is the newest idea. Of, for a long time, that, that official definition was it had to be repeated over time. Now they're saying, you know what? You can be a bully once. It doesn't have to be repeated over time. <laughs> Most often, it is repeated over time, but you can have one big zinger that's a just kidding, and it's not a just kidding. Did you drop it? No. <laughs> 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 Underwear. Creating an excuse for a feeling of uselessness. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's the whole um, taking work away from you. You know you're supposed to do it, but trying to demean you and say, mm, let me handle that, it's too much for you. <laughs> Yelling and using profanity. You're gonna be applesauce by tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly changing work guidelines or expectations. <laughs> Criticizing a person persistently or constantly or publicly, publicly in front of peers. So that's the old idea that no matter what I do, it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm always going to be on your case about something. Undermining a person's work. I didn't hear what you said. Undermining a person's uh, work. Um, and I think many of us have experienced that when you get somebody in that power position that they think they can just subtly undermine what's going on. Physically abusing or threatening abuse. 
hopefully we don't experience that much, but um, that's the old physical abuse, the, sh the shoving into the cash register drawer. Once is an accident, over and over and over again is not an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Removing areas of responsibilities without just cause. So, you know, taking things away from you without a reason to take things away from you. Blocking applications for training, leave, or promotion. And I noticed we have apple juice kind of. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's> me. <laughs> oh, that must have been <laughs> where I went. <laughs> um, here's, here's a couple others. Um, tampering with a person's personal belongings or equipment at work. You know, messing around and then just say, oh, that's just a joke. You know, this is just a practical joke. That's not. Uh, let me see. Spreading malicious rumors, gossip, or innuendos that are not true. Poor Apple. Um, excluding or isolating somebody socially. So you're not part of my group anymore. Good catch. <laughs> Intimidating somebody. Belittling a person's opinions. So when we, when we do this activity with kids, they will say, um, gosh, the apple's crying. And you know what? Our apple is crying. It, uh, every time I, I drop it anymore, I get apple tears. But I'm working with this person. And this person looks pretty normal. You know, she shows up at work every day. She puts on a happy face. She tries to do her job as best she can. There may be some hiding out in the bathroom and, and drying, you know, some tears when somebody zings me one more time and I feel like I can't take it. But for the most part, if I'm around her, I'm thinking, it's okay, she, she's not bad. We know that workplace bullying um, is made up of a lot of that, oh, they're okay, it didn't bother, they're a strong person, they can take it, it's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal, and it does hurt. Now, um, if we take our, our poor little coworker, and if we look at, if we could peel back her skin and look at the inside, we can see that she's pretty bruised. Yeah. And it's the same way for people. So the more that we, they're bullied, um, the more we're unable to peel back their skin, but that hurts there. We, when we work with groups and do trainings, quite often we'll have um, adults who will be able to say, this happened to me when I was in fourth grade or this happened to me when I was 10. Um, and I may be 65, but I can tell you exactly where I was when this happened to me and exactly what I was doing when this happened to me. So it doesn't, it doesn't go away. Now, what does that mean for my boss? Well, it means for my boss that um, coworkers get sick more. Coworkers um, are, if, if I come to work every day bullied, and my focus is on just pulling myself together at work, then um, my focus isn't on my job. So it's kind of like that, how much energy do I have for work when my energy is trying to survive and not be hurt anymore? So for my workplace, for my boss, for my company, it's that loss of, of, um, of of uh, self-esteem. Yeah, that. <laughs> you know, it's just that I don't get from that worker what I could get from that worker. So it's, it's productivity. That, yeah, Lots of and productivity. what that means then is I'm not getting the production from that worker. If I'm in a business where performance equates um, money, then I'm not getting the money that I could because I have fostered a kind of environment that's not conducive to um, teamwork and doing the best that can possibly be done. 
Um, on you know page two of your handout, it just has some more of those kinds of, of bullying kinds of things. There are some things that um, the people doing the research says that aren't bullying. So they say it's not bullying if you have a manager or a coworker who yells once in a while. Now, if you go back to Barbara Coloroso and those people who are saying, you know what, it's just a one thing kind of deal, then you say, that doesn't fit the old definition of bullying, but that certainly fits the new definition of bullying, that, you know what, you need to control yourself. When we work with kids, um, we've moved so much away from, we work with kids to say, this is what bullying is, but then we've moved more into the character area to say, you know what, if you are respectful, if, um, and we can't say in a public school, but we can certainly say it in a, in a private school or when we're working with churches, if you're living a Matthew seven twelve kind of life and, and the do unto others, then you're not being a bully. If you're treating people the way you want to be treated, then you're not being a bully. If you are um, responsible and doing the right thing, even, though, but even when nobody's there to tell you to do the right thing, you're not being a bully. If you are caring and showing care and empathy for somebody, and if you can understand what it's like to walk in their shoes, you're not being a bully. So the same thing happens for us in the workplace. You know, if we are respectful, if we are responsible, if we are caring, we're not being a bully. If we're doing all of those kinds of things, the product, uh, productivity in our company is huge. If we're not, our customers lose, our company loses, and we lose. So um, when we work with kids, we work on those six pillars of, of character and um, to remember them, we just say, you're terrific. And it's trustworthy, respectful, responsible, um, fairness, citizenship, and caring. So if you're doing all of those kinds of things, you're not being a bully. If we focus on those as adults, we're not being a bully. So it's as much about, um, it's, it's not as much about bullying as it is about our character. And our character sets the stage for what kind of behavior we have. Um, page four tells us that um, it, it gives you some examples of um, examples of bullying in the workplace. And one of the things that they talk about there is the term mobbing. And they refer to mobbing as a group of people that band together um, to bully. When we work with kids, we say that research has told us ab about, in every any setting, about 5% of the people in that setting are targets. About 5% of the people in that setting are bullies. But that leaves about 90% of the people who aren't. So what that means for the 90% of us is, we better stand up and say to the bully, knock it off, that's not okay. So if we can treat, train kids to talk, walk, and tell when they see bullying going on, say to the bully, stop it, you know, you're being a jerk, you're being a clown, don't do that. If we can say to the kids, grab the target and walk away from what's going on, and tell, find a caring adult and tell them what's going on, we can say to people in the workplace, to women in the workplace, to our coworkers, our male and female coworkers, you know what, it's not okay that they're behaving like that. So the same kind of thing that we, walk, we use with kids, we can use with adults. It behooves us, if we see bullying going on, to say, you know what, that's not cool. You know, stop it. You know, you may think that joke's funny, but personally I'm offended by it, so don't do it. Now, if I'm the target, I don't have the strength to do that because I've been bullied so much that that strength is gone. Now, if you are with me as the bystander or an upstander and if you say to the bully, stop it, knock it off, that's not cool, 
I may find enough strength to say, yeah, I don't appreciate it, but rarely will I do that on my own if I've been targeted. So I need you guys to be with me to help protect me. Um, this handout says has tips that you should know that you can protect yourself with workplace bullying. And uh, it's, it's pretty basic. The first one is stop it early. It's just like cancer. The more you ignore it, the longer you let it, to gr let it grow, the more it invades everything about your life. So the same thing about workplace bullying. If it's going on, stop it. Um, then the other thing is, don't bully others. If you don't like it, if you don't like seeing it, then don't go there yourself. Be cognizant of the things you say and do. And I remember <clears throat> we were doing an activity at Walnut once, getting ready for a big Purple Hands assembly. And um, we had kids singing. It was after 9-11. And we had a little video clip of um, movie stars, actors and actresses who, have, who had come together to raise money for the victims of 9-11 um, and their families. And I was saying to a group of kids who were singing, I was going to say, we're going to show this, but don't pay attention to Clint Eastwood because he's kind of looking like a doofus there. And the kids went, Mrs. Tool, you just used your words to hurt him. And I went, you know what? Uh -huh. I did. And that was something that just flipped out so fast. So, um, you know, we have to be cognizant of what we say and how it may make somebody else feel. And that's an area that I work with more and more, uh, that I work on for myself, a self goal for myself more and more. Um, harness the power of the group, and that's a whole, there's power in the group. Um, and if you're applying for a job, they say, Heads up, you know, talk to people who work there, talk to people who know about the business, and if they say, man, I don't know that I'd want to work there, ask about turnover. If there's a big turnover there, then maybe it's not the place that you want to be. You know, if you say, oh, we hire somebody and they stay for 47 years and then they leave, you know, when they're 70 and we wheel them out in the wheelchair, then you say, that's where I want to be, because that's a good place to work. Um, set your boundaries. When somebody starts speaking rudely, say, I don't think it's funny. You know, knock it off. Stand up for one another. They say that even though it's not illegal now, you want to start keeping records of bullying incidents and just keep a little log of your, for yourself about what's going on. Um, if you are being targeted, bring your complaint to human resources. Then they say hire, you know, hire an attorney. I'd say that's you know, way out there, but that, that is um, that an is option. Requested. And then um, leave. And I will tell you that for most people, it's easy to say, I'm going to tell them to take this job and shove it. But when I depend on that income, when I have bills and I have a family and I have expectations, that is so much easier to say than it is to do. So, uh, that's certainly one of the options, not always the easiest one to do. I like what it says, <clears throat> following the advice to leave. You know, plan, protect yourself, consult, uh, make your departure be a, a good departure, mm -hmm. good for you. Yeah. Rather than a, That's you know, it. Uh, here's my cue. I'm, I'm out, out of here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and the whole thing, the, the rest of it is, for, for me as the target, manage my stress. If, if I take the stress um, that I have at work and take it home and bring it home to my family, it's not fair to my family. You know, So I need to find some way to, if it's stressful for me at work, and if I can't decompress on the way home, if I can't meditate, if I can't listen to calming music, if I can't do something, then maybe I need to stop at the Y for 15 minutes and ride a bicycle. You know, maybe I need to do something to decompress and get away from that stress. Um, and that's part of that whole limit, that damage. If one part of your work, is, one part of your life isn't working well, don't take it into the other part. For any of you who are Facebook um, friends, practice gratitude, and that's been a big thing going around Facebook. You know, spend five days or seven days 
every day listing three things that you're grateful for. Sometimes we don't do enough of practicing gratitude and thinking about, you know what? I may have a really crappy cold and not feel good, but I'm grateful to be alive. You know, I'm grateful that it's the end of October and, oh my gosh, you know, I remember the year that they canceled Halloween because of a blizzard. Yes. You know, so this is wonderful weather. So play the glad game. Um, meditate or learn to meditate and then share your knowledge. So that's bullying 101 in the workplace. How about comments or questions? I'd, I'd like to ask your opinion of, of what somebody does. I'm going to give this to them. All this fits. This is a coach who is also a teacher that bullies. It's you know bullies one of the players constantly, and and it has become so bad now that other parents have noticed and gone up to the yeah. child's parents. Um, it's not okay. And when I worked with teachers, um, one of one of um, the things that we worked with, with with kids on being an upstander is tell somebody who can make a difference. You know, report when bullying go, is going on. So I had um, one day, I had um, the counselor called, we carried two-way radios and called and said, um, Mrs. Jewell, can you stop by my office because I've got a, a bullying report that you're going to want to hear. And I said, okay. So I stopped in and I looked at these two sweet little girls and I said, is somebody being bullied? And I said, and you know who the bully is? And they said, who is the bully? And they named their math teacher. And they said, we saw him say this to another teacher on our team, and that wasn't respectful or caring. And every day in class, he singles these kids out, and that's not okay. And, um, and then they went, and what are you gonna do about it, Mrs. Tool? And he said, well, you know, it's an office referral, so I'm gonna handle it as an office referral. So I, I went to the teacher and said, I had an office referral on you. And he said, I don't get what that means. And I said, you know, these kids stop by to say they observed you saying this to a coworker, that every day in class you do this, this, and this. And um, his face turned kind of red and he said, yeah, I do that and I, and I did that. And I said, you know what, you're a role model and that's not okay. So sometimes for those kinds, of, they need to say, you know what, the heat of the moment isn't about winning. The whole thing is about the kind of role model you are and the message that you give to kids. So they need somebody to stand up to them to say, it's not okay behavior, stop it. When you confront someone about their behavior, it seems as though not only saying it's not appropriate or it's not right, but you have to, I would think it would be best to state to them exactly what they're doing yeah. that is not right. And, because and they may not realize that. Right. Now. One of the things that they work with teachers on is saying, you know, when this and this and this happened, I saw you, I heard you, and to me, I think that's an example of bullying. Um, to say, you're being a bully, all that does is put up the old, oh no I'm not, kind of thing. But when you label the behavior, when you say, this is what I saw, this is what I heard, and when, in my mind, I think that's bullying, then, no, no it's not, it's just my personality. Maybe just your personality, but to me, it appears to be bullying. You're exactly right. And sometimes it's how someone presents themselves or how nice, you know, say something to someone in a nice way and not in a derogatory right. way. You know. Yeah, a anytime you do the old confrontational, try to back somebody into a corner, um, you've lost right away there. They're not going to hear what you say. But when you can do the old, this is what I saw, this is what I heard, this is what I call it, or it makes me really uncomfortable, it's about you. And, you know, if they say it doesn't make me uncomfortable, I bet there are more people like me 
who are concerned about that than not. And then that's it. I mean, unless you're the boss, you don't have the clout to change that, but you can certainly call them on their behavior. Some bosses probably need to be having a lesson on this. What? Some bosses need to have a lesson on this. Yeah. I, true. I would agree. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Thanks, ladies, very much. Now, I have um, some Purple Hands handout. And um, the YWCA has a group, Stand for the Silent, and what we are doing is we're talking about bullying in the community. We're working on having the Purple Hands logo become uh, community-wide, so the more we see it, the more it's kind of a little vision for us to stop, think about what we're doing, check our, check our words, check our actions, and try to be respectful, responsible, and caring. So um, we're gathering Purple Hands signatures from people, and if you'd like to do that, I have purple paper and um, a pen, and what we would like to have you do is trace your hand, and then in the middle of the hand, write your name and your date. Our goal is, Anita, how many hands do we have? Pretty good stack anymore. I think about 200. Um, eventually, we're going to cut out these hands and display them <laughs> across the community. So hang them somewhere, someplace, so more and more people are seeing that. Do hand and know they sign and date it in the, in the middle of the hand? Yes. So that they yeah. So I have that. If we did it before, <laughs> you can do it again. You can do it again. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and I have brochures. I have refrigerator magnets or file cabinet magnets. And I have pins if you want a lapel pin to wear. So make sure you stop and pick those up. Um, before you leave, and I'll just pass some of these around. And would you like these back in case you, you can throw those away? Thank you so Oops. much, Debbie. Uh -huh. I appreciate you coming. Thank, Thank you, you all for coming. You.